What screams I'm economically illiterate? Write what you think screams that a person is not economically literate. I will read the comments. Everyone have a good viewing. Story 1. People going on multiple holidays a year, getting Botox, members of gyms, seemingly doing drugs slash drinking every weekend, all whilst earning fractionally more than minimum wage. I can think of about 10 acquaintances off the top of my head who do this. None have any pension slash savings or a home either. It's nuts, and I feel more worried about them. They seem to be about themselves. Story 2. My ADHD brother is way worse off than most of the horror stories you guys are telling. You people talking about buying weird stocks are doing okay in comparison. My brother would spend his money to buy video games, music on iTunes, when that was a thing, and then not have money to pay rent. Owed money to some real shady people at times. His brain just can't consider the consequences of these things. He's a car mechanic now and has two kids. His wife handles the finances. But my mother probably did not even tell me the worst horror stories of the time she bailed him out by paying for his rent and such. She keeps a lid on that. He would have been in some real shit. Was it not for her? Story 3. Anyone who has ever parroted the political talking point of getting the wealthy to pay their fair share. I'm not suggesting that corporate greed isn't real. It's just an inevitable side effect of capitalism. However, it's simply not true about paying their fair share. The top earning 1% make up 18% of all income, but already pay 25% of all federal taxes and 40% of income taxes. I hate for facts to ruin a good left-wing narrative, but it displays a fundamental lack of understanding about how capitalism versus socialism actually works, not to mention their histories. Story 4. What I deal with every day. Seeing people with car loans who have 15% to 24.99% APRs on not just $5K to $20K used cars they had to buy because they needed a car, but also on $25K to $50K vehicles. If you borrow $20K at a 3% APR on a 76-month loan, you would pay about $2K in interest over 6 years, so about $22K for the vehicle. If you borrow $20K at a 24.99% APR on a 76-month loan, you would be signing up to pay over $20K in interest, so over $40K for a $20K vehicle and loan. Story 5, two things. Payday loan companies. If you use them, you probably can't afford to use them. Owning and operating a car for most people. Sure, you have to plan your whole life to live car-free. You need to live somewhere that is walkable or cyclable year-round, or that has good, reliable public transportation. The cost of living is often higher in those areas. The thing is, you don't have to pay for car insurance and registration, usually over $100 slash month. You don't have to pay for maintenance and repairs, figure at least $1.50 a month for that. Gas and oil, another $50 a month. And you don't have to make a car payment, at least $200 a month for anything that is both reliable and safe. That's $500 a month. If you live where public transit works for you, it generally costs about $50 a month if you buy the monthly pass. It can be done. I did it for decades. For a good portion of that time, I put that money into savings and investments. Retirement savings are not a problem for me. Don't get me wrong. Cars can be really nice to have. Just be aware of how much that really nice costs. Story 6. Not understanding how inflation works and we can't print money in excess. There was a trend on TikTok 3, four years ago in lockdown, all about giving out fake imaginary currency, dabloons, and some saying you could buy things for this currency, fake houses, outfits, ECT. Video started off giving out 100 or so, and things costing 1,000 and above. Within a week, people were saying they had infinite, and because of videos gave them 1000000000000. In about three weeks, the trend crashed. The original creator tried to certify that there was only select users that could give out currency, and the limit was 100 a video. It was too late the economy had crashed because people weren't filling to start again and give up their currency. No one could enforce it. This was one of the most interesting trends because I think a lot of people who posted and believed the government could print money to give out learnt about inflation without ever understanding it. Story 7. Basically, anytime people use the word capitalism on the internet, capitalism is the private ownership and direction of the means of production of foods and services. Period. It is descriptive. It neither prescribes nor proscribes any other behavior at all. It doesn't require that you be greedy, exploit anybody, make a profit, act selfishly, 
or any of the other behaviors people try to cram into the definition to make it fit their thing-I-don't-like-involving-money definition. Virtually every country in the world has a capitalist economy, and the UN Charter for Human Rights includes capitalism as a fundamental right of people. Same goes for socialism. Socialism is merely the public ownership of the means of production of goods and services. It doesn't require you to be altruistic, provide care for people, or that a government spend money on any specific thing. Virtually all the things people call socialism is just spending of tax revenue from capitalism, but only when it's spending they like. People bang on about socialism when they're building hospitals, but get pretty quiet when building military bases comes up. The nuclear bomb was a socialist endeavor. The cure for polio was a capitalist one. Story 8. Wildly Illogical Purchases A colleague of mine constantly complains about not having enough money, not being able to afford to attend graduate school so she can earn more money for the work we already do. We're teachers. Last night, she forgot to bring dog food to the bar to feed her pretend service dog. The dog was obviously starving, barking abrasively and disturbing everyone at the bar. Rather than walk ten minutes back home and feed the miserable dog, my colleague spent $1.45 to have dog food delivered to the bar, knowing it would take about 75 minutes to arrive. This, to me, screams economically illiterate, as well as just being cruel to her dog and inconsiderate of her companions. Notice my great effort not to call this person a friend. Story 9. Blaming the poor for welfare fraud. Billionaires essentially pay 0% tax. The trick is to pay the tax then claw it all back via tax write-offs. But then you have a nice juicy tax return to say, I paid this. Just miss off the claim backs and you're golden. It's why Zuckerberg, Musk, Tim Cook, Bezos, etc. all pay effectively 0% tax long-term. A few years back, Facebook accidentally overclaimed R&D write-offs to the tune of 11 million pounds. HMRC came to a sweetheart deal where they wouldn't have to pay it back, ever. That is, cabinet ministers got envelopes stuffed with cash. So basically, they paid minus 11 million in taxes and we had to pay them. Story 10 semi-literate is way more dangerous. For instance, people who believe that supply and demand determines price. It does not always. For instance, when drought strikes, on the one end, it rings true for the cattle rancher who obtains less for his cattle. But the consumer hardly see that, since the retailer keeps the price the same and simply makes a larger profit. Although the principle of supply and demand that generate a price is generally true, Way too many economists and politicians drive decisions on interest rates to detrimental effects to the public good based on this semi-truth. How so? If inflation is high, interest rates goes up. Then, in this example, drought sets in and the farmer has to bear the brunt of lower price for meat whilst still paying a high amount on overdrafts and loans, which results in bankruptcy. Less employment due to large cartel formation, which drives up inflation in the long run. Story 11. Believing stock market capitalization is always an accurate reflection of value of company. A.K.A. belief that stock bubbles and malinvestment don't exist. Yes, doofus. Tesla is in fact only good investment for speculation, and not if you expect to be paid dividends. As its share price is extreme over bloated compared to revenue, hell it's bloated. Even if you just take a look AF the global automotive sector's revenue. Story 12. Concluding that economics must be BS because the government did something shitty. Most of what politicians try to get away with goes against the economic theory or scholar consensus. If your doctor tells you to drink bleach, you conclude you need to see a new doctor. Not that medicine is BS and you should see a shaman instead. But if a politician tells you we need to cut taxes on the rich, you conclude that economics is BS and that next time you should instead vote for whoever promises to do more unorthodox, unproven crap. Story 13. I saw a FB post earlier with the math problem below, and the number of folks who got the wrong answer was frightening and hilarious. Scenario. You buy a cow for $800, then sell it for $1,000. Then you buy the same cow for $1,100 and sell it for $1,300. How much money did you make? I would say easily over half said $300 because... You had to take an extra $100 out of your own pocket for the second transaction. JFC. I tried to walk someone through it in the comments section, my own dumb fault for trying, and lost them at net margin. Story 14. Thinking it is wise to vote for people who are going to give you more free stuff. When the government gives you free stuff, you pay many times over. Once in the tax to pay the cost of the free stuff, a second time in how inefficiently the government distributes it. 
a third time for the salaries of the people who run the program, a fourth time for all of the people who cheat the program, a fifth time in the loss of Social Security when the government's budget deficit can't be balanced, a sixth time when it all results in inflation, a seventh when the Fed raises rates to fight inflation and your loan costs go up. I could go on and on. Stuff isn't ever free. The first thing they teach you in Econ 101, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Story 15. I'm a trader, and whilst I don't expect the layman to understand macroeconomics, it blows my mind how many people talk about it when making personal finance decisions. It's so bad the media often have discussion shows involving laypeople on this subject. It's obvious they don't understand what they are talking about and are just reading out buzzwords. It's also used by people in the public sector to make justify subsequently terrible policy decisions. Story 16. I've been on the phone now with T-Mobile for about an hour, trying to figure out why we're paying an additional amount each month above the cost of the plan that we signed up for. For the three free iPhone 15 phones that were supposed to be included, again for free, in the plan that we signed up for. We, so apparently I'm financially illiterate. Jesus, these wireless phone companies are a joke. Story 17. Talking about a country having debt as if it's the same as your Visa credit card. And I know why. The right-wing media constantly says it. You can tell someone watches Murdoch Media whenever they use that old You can't just run up the country's credit card. Yes, you can. Fuck off. It's called investing and everyone does it. Story 18. Thinking that the government should always run a surplus and that it's irresponsible to run a deficit. This is actually a big problem in Australia. About 20 years ago, the conservative government at the time made a big deal over balancing the books and congratulating itself on running a surplus and criticized the previous governments for having occasional deficits. Since then, many Australians think that a government running a deficit is the same kind of thing as a household running a deficit that is spending more than you can afford. As a result, it's political suicide to deliberately run a deficit, even if that's what the economy requires. Almost no one understands that a government surplus means the government has taken more money out of the economy than it has put it in. In other words, it's causing the economy to shrink. To support a growing economy, a government should typically run a deficit. Story 19. Proposing an unrealized capital gains tax. These people don't seem to understand how assets and money work. It's impossible to use an asset economically without incurring a tax in the U.S. Anytime you exchange an asset, you get taxed on the profit. If you exchange a non-liquid asset for another non-liquid asset, you're taxed on the difference between the value of the assets. If you use the asset as a collateral for a loan, you still have to pay the loan off in USD, so you need USD, and that is taxed. Story 20. I saw this post earlier today where a guy was talking about how proud he was of getting a new truck, and a bunch of people were talking about how he was parked on the sidewalk. He responded to a comment by bragging about how he's going to buy his next truck for $120K. And when one person said to return the particular truck because it'll be shit right after warranty ends, the guy said, return it to where, Walmart? I've seen worse. But that was today. Story 21. People who claim day trading is their primary source of income. Takes two seconds to Google any study ever written about the expected returns to discover it's a losing proposition that results in losses, tilde 90% of the time. If you truly discovered some magic formula, without insider information, you'd be poached for $1M plus on Wall Street to trade with others' money with employment benefits. There's a reason banks won't loan a penny to somebody who claims trading as their sole source of income. Also, anyone who's been swindled by TikTok gurus, MLMs, dropshipping, flipping, scammy courses, investing entire net worth in crypto shitcoins, etc. At this point, I automatically assume they're gullible, desperate, and or poorly educated. Story 22. Anyone that goes into a card game thinking it's an investment, the value of cards go down and it's not a quick buck. And even then, you'll have no idea what it'll look like in 10 years where things might go up. So stop hoarding Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh! or whatever, and just go into it as a hobby or you'll sorely be disappointed. One of the setbacks from COVID era that has stuck around that's toxic. Story 23. The government should be run like a business. It should balance its budget. Okay, first of all, businesses take on debt intentionally. If you're getting a sustainable return that's greater than the interest, taking on debt earns you money and allows you to expand. The bank essentially takes a cut of your extra profits in return for enabling you to do whatever it is you're doing to earn money. Secondly, no, the fuck it should not run like a business. Businesses are there to make profit for their owners. The government is there to serve and protect the people. Also, debt taken on by the government is usually extremely low interest. Story 24. 
When people aren't able to grasp how their local economic conditions are influenced by global economic conditions, so they blame their nearest leader that they dislike. There is not a first world country on this planet that is not affected by global markets. So to think that your country's PM, president, chancellor, or whoever could just wave a magic wand to make your country impervious to global issues is asinine. A much better marker of how they're doing running your country is how you're doing compared to other countries operating at a similar economic level. Story 25. I once worked with a guy whose get-rich-quick scheme was to buy an ATM. His plan was to buy the ATM, only costs like 3K or 30K apparently, and have it installed in his house. He'd then open a lot of bank accounts and basically take money out. The way he said he'd make money is that every time the ATM gets used, it'd give him like $3 or percent five of what was taken. He'd keep transferring money between accounts infinitely and basically have an infinite supply of money. Now, when I tried to explain to him that the money he'd earn would come from the fees he'd pay, so he'd either lose money or never gain money, he acted like I was missing the point. If it's a bank's ATM that pays a set location based on how often it's used, then they'll never install it in your house. This was easily the dumbest get-rich-quick scheme I've ever heard. Worst part is that the guy who had it was like 50 and working at Amazon at the time. Story 26. Let's answer the question after pointing out that discussing bad financial literacy screams that a person is illiterate about economics in general. First obvious one is that they believe in trickle-down economics. This has been thoroughly shown as bullshit. Along with Bush economics, none of the tax breaks paid for themselves. Next is a mix of personal and macro econ. People don't understand that raising minimum wage raises wages across the board. I actually had a girl I met start crying when I suggested raising min wage would help everyone. She thought the grease monkeys at her auto shop shouldn't make as much as her. No amount of talk could convince her that she could make more if everyone was paid more, e.g. that she could just say, keep paying me dollar two slash HR more than them. Also screaming that everything is socialism, communism. And I'll stop after pointing out that unions are the only reason we have many, many things. Even if some example of something a random person did in a union 40 years ago is an agreeably bad thing, lol. Story 27 first and foremost. Thinking that the only way to make money is to exchange your time for it working as a W-2 employee. Refusing to learn something simply because you heard somebody else say something about it and immediately rule it out as a scam while people are making an unbelievable living doing it. That's a big one. Spending earned income on liabilities instead of assets. That's an even bigger one. Thinking that just because you work for a big company means that you have job security. Not understanding the United States tax code and how it works. Not understanding the power of insurance to build wealth or thinking that life insurance is only a value when you die. The truth is, it's really not someone's fault because our education system is completely devoid of financial literacy. So this creates an environment where somebody has to proactively go out and learn which very few people take the time to do, especially those who are around other financially illiterate people most of their day. Story 28 LOL, reading through the thread, I'm realizing this comment of economically illiterate is really trying to say is you're financially irresponsible. Which the phrase doesn't really convey that. I mean, the vast majority of the world is economically illiterate. That's why there's college courses to earn an economics degree. And jobs called financial advisor, planner, etc. If the point was to say what screams you suck with personal money management, one should probably not use the word economy. If we're talking about governed fiscal policy and all the minutia that goes into managing that and the global economic engine, then you'd have to frame the discussion around specifics. Story 29. I got beef with Greg Mankiw and his 10 Principles of Economics. Anyone who's ever taken an intro-level econ course in college knows exactly what I'm talking about. Rational choice theory, the model underpinning all of these supposed principles, is bunk. People are not cost-benefit analysis machines. Even a cursory look at history reveals that people make decisions all the time that are irrational, to which I'm sure econ chuds will blather on about externalities, and if they get really desperate, how economics is a theoretical discipline and they're just dealing with the realm of theory. Schrodinger's discipline, I suppose. Economics is a theoretical science, but according to the classes I've been in, also a hard science, backed up by psychology, dealing with how people make decisions. I've never seen someone who wasn't an economist try and use RTC to explain anything. Explain anything well, I should say. I did my postgrad work on suicide bombers and terrorism, and let's just say that rational choice theory has to do some bizarre analytical gymnastics 
to account for the fact that people blow themselves and each other up pretty regularly. More often, RTC-based models just chalk suicide bombings and terrorism up to Timmy Joe being crazy or brainwashed or irrational. Which, oddly, is the same sort of narrative we hear about the rash of white nationalist terror attacks, typically mass shootings, in the modern USA, and even more oddly, about the Holocaust. These heinous actions were, are, in these narratives, carried out by irrational, weak-minded people who aren't able to think about their own actions rationally, which, without getting too into it, is simply not the case. Rational choice theory and the science, economics based on it, are a religion for rich people, and instead of stories about Zeus or Gilgamesh, we get myths about how rational people think at the margins, or how trade makes people better off. But what's more likely? That every incident of people making irrational decisions is an inexplicable anomalous phenomenon that somehow the definitely totally correct model just can't account for, or that the model itself is incapable of consistently accurately describing reality, which I'm sure people will scream and yell at me for saying, with plenty of footnotes from Man Q and his ideological progeny. But there's about as much evidence in the real world to suggest, for example, that trade always makes people better off because it's just something intrinsic to trade as a phenomenon as there is to suggest that Zeus married his sister and raped half of ancient Greece. And not to get too Foucauldian, but this notion of rationality is pretty suspect and strikes me as more a function of power structures than anything remotely resembling a quality present in nature. Which brings us to the point that economic literacy is an ability to navigate human behavior and social interactions taking place within a particular context of human-made faith-based power structures, not an ability to understand some fundamental aspect of what it means to be human or live in any given society. There is nothing fundamental about modern economics. It is not a reflection of some deeper universal laws. So I'd say that anyone who simply cites economics or the economy as justification for XYZ screams, I'm economically illiterate. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.